So this video is going to walk us through the five steps that we need to do to create the constraints. So the first step, mate the midplane of the cam, with the follower has a plane called mate with midplane of cam. The second one is going to mate the center line of the hole on the cam to the axle of the handle. Then we're going to mate the rotation plane of the cam to the big plane of the handle. We're going to do a transition constraint so the follower follows the cam up and down. And finally an angle constraint between the rotation plane of the cam and the follower. You can see kind of four and five laid out down here in the bottom picture. And so I've got these laid out. These are the five steps that we're going to be doing, and I'll try to keep them up down here in the bottom. So, step one. Before we even start, though, let's talk about planes again. We need to have the planes visible. If you don't have the planes visible, you need to go to File, Open, go back and open up your plane, and hopefully in your origin folder right click and turn the visibility of these on. With the z-axis I've also unchecked auto resize and that's what allows me to drag this and make that bigger. When you're done making the planes visible save or if you've already done it don't worry about it and now we're ready to go here. So step one made the cam midplane with the follower made with the midplane of cam. So this is my cam midplane right here. It's the one that slices it in half, the one that is selected in blue there. That's the midplane. Not always going to be the XY plane, dependent on how you drew it. Most of the time, if you drew it same way as I, should be the XY plane, but not always. Um, and then in the follower over here in my browser window, I have a special plane that you can see when I hover over it, it appears. Okay, but you don't want to click on it here. We want to click in our browser window, mate with the midplane of cam. And now that that is snapped together, we heard our little snap sound and we can hit apply. Now we're going to rotate to the back and I like to hold shift and your mouse wheel. And when you press it in, instead of scrolling up and down, you can click on it, just like we click on the left or right mouse. That lets us rotate. So I'm going to second constraint. Let's go down to number two. We're going to mate the center line of the cam hole with the axle. So here's our center line going through the cam hole. And down here is the axle. That is our second constraint. Number three. We're going to mate the cam rotation plane with the big rotation plane of the handle. So right here, this plane going like this is the rotation plane. Okay, so when we look back here, that's this plane. You got to be careful when you're clicking on it. We always need to be by the edge. I'm going to hit escape and rotate this around a little bit so it's out of the way. Shortcut C to get back into constraining. And this plane right here, not the center, green dots or anything, but this plane is the rotation plane. And the same thing for the handle, this big plane going around the outside. Those two going together is step three. And hit apply. Now we're on to step four, which is the transition constraint. So we have to click the transitional button up on the top. Right here we click on transitional and you have to click on the bottom of the follower first and it should look like this. If you're seeing a center line this is a bad problem because we did not click on transitional yet. So click on the bottom of the cam and then the outside or sorry the bottom of the follower and the outside of our cam and hit apply. When I hit escape now this should go around. The very last constraint that we need to do is the angle constraint for the rotation plane of the cam, so that same one we just did, and the follower, this big plane going up and down 
that we can see in the pretty picture I drew. You can see number five, we've laid out this plane going through and this one here. And what this is going to allow us to do is as we change it, the cam is going to change its angle and rotate down because the follower has to stay up and down. And so when we type in different angles, that's what's going to let the cam rotate around. So constrain, we need to click the angle tool right here, the second one. And we've got a couple different solutions and the one we're looking for just has two. So again, we're going to zoom in and find this plane of the cam right here, the rotation plane. And then for the follower, rotate so you're not looking at it straight on. We want to be kind of on the side. Watch out for floating cams. And you need to be by the edge of the plane. So I clicked on the outside edge and now hit apply. And it doesn't rotate because we can see in our relationships over here on our browser window, the top folder, we hit the triangle to open that up. And angle two down here is a relationship. Now I want to talk about angle one. Don't change angle one. Angle one is what's stopping this follower from spinning around. Okay. We don't want to be messing around with um, angle one. I've had people try to change that and it, it just causes problems. So leave angle one alone. And this angle constraint that we just made in between the cam and the follower, that is what we're going to be changing. And you can see when I click on it, I can type in 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, forgot what 270 plus 45 is, 315, and then 360 or 0. So those are all of your dimensions going around. We use 45 degree increments for everyone except for the hexagon. The hexagon we use 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, uh, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, and 360. Hopefully I got those all right. Um, and so those are all of the constraints that we need. So once you've got that done, we should then be recording it in a table that looks like this. So in Google Sheets, should have the angle of rotation, all of those numbers I just rattled off. And then we're measuring the height of the top of the follower and the radial dimension of the cam or the height of the bottom of the follower. So let's talk about that quick and then we'll end this video. So you can see when we zoom in, here's the bottom right now is about at a quarter inch and the top is at five. So if I change my angle, go to 45, it goes up a little bit. I'd maybe say an eighth. It went up, go up to 90. Now it's up at three eighths and my bottom is at um, what's that at five eighths it's kind of hard to see the bottom of our ruler there we go okay so we're at five eighths so you notice the length of the cam is not changing or sorry the length of the follower is not changing as we go up and down the follower is just following it up and down it doesn't change. So you don't need to record both the top and bottom all the way across. If you just record all of the top and then one for the bottom, you should be able to calculate what the difference is between the top and the bottom in this first one. And that's going to tell you what the length of the follower is. As you can see in this chart, in the PLTW activity 4.5, in the procedure number seven, we have to create a motion graph and that's what we'll be working towards. And you can see the top and bottom of the follower are both the same line and the difference in between those two is the length of the follower. All right, if you have any questions, please ask. Thanks for watching.